Hello everyone, this is Tina with Tiaz's Treasures and I am inundated with card kits that I need to catch up on and make some cards with. So this is Hero Arts um, October 2022 card kit of the month and it's a couple add-ons and um, a few other things here and there so let's get started. Let's see if I can get it out of this bag. It always comes in this really neat mesh bag now, which I love storing them in. Um, we get some Heroes Use Pigment Unicorn and some Reactive Sea Salt. They're both white. Um, I'm assuming this is a dye ink and this is a pigment ink. Um, I wish they said on top. Well, this one does say pigment. I wish this one said dye. I don't know. Die, die. So I have this free stamp set with all these wonderful little um, with love for someone sweet, kind of Valentine's Day things, be mine. So I will not be using this free We Appreciate You stamp they sent me. Now I'm not sure if they sent me this, um, said everyone a free stamp or if I'm just really, really special. Who knows? <laughs> so... For my add-on, I'm going to get to these first because, um, oh, why not? I bought this really cool tree st stamp with all these little um, fa la 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 ho 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 blessings. I thought that would look so good in a lot of different cards as a background stamp. Just like, you know, use it not as the main focal point. Um, I might be using it as the main focal point or not on the stamps I make. I don't know what I'm going to do yet with um, this kit. I won't know till uh, I figure out my cards. But I also got this little bundle with the penguin. And it's got a little sweater and a little scarf, a little hat. Um, happy holidays. Have a cozy Christmas. It is just too cute to pass. I had to get it. So now on to the stamp set. The stamp set, uh, does Hero Arts name it stamp set? I don't know. But anyhow, this kit, let's see, comes with this really cool background stamp that uh, you can use the snow or throughout the year for something else if you wanted, just a really cool looking background, but that makes some Really, it's going to make some fun snow. We already know. We're going to have to use that on something. We get two of um, sheets of pearlescent cardstock. It's kind of thin. It almost reminds me a little bit. It almost feels like a real thin sheets of foam, but it's not. It's cardstock. And we get two um, blue. What are they called? This is lapis. Lapis blue, which is really pretty, and two sheets of this snow glow, or no, this or is this snow glow or diamond. This has got to be diamond glitter, and I don't think you can see how pretty this really is. It's got like little almost like hexagons, and you can see each little piece individually in real life, and it's just gorgeous. I have not seen another glitter paper that looks like this. So there's that. Really, really pretty. Now for our stamp set, we have a bunch of Christmas silhouettes. And of course, we have frame cuts for them all. Um, and including, I believe, some of the sentiments uh, as well this uh, month. I don't know if we have for... There's four sentiments. I don't know if we have a die cut for each one, but I knew, no, there is like for Merry Christmas. Um, gosh. And well, I'll have to figure it out. But anyhow, we have a uh, sending holiday cheer, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, tis the season. And we have some really cool little scenes. Got a little train, um, some deer, a deer with person, Santa sleigh, elves, there's one with Santa in the sky, a uh, little village. It's just, I think this is going to be really fun and we don't have to color unless we want to. So anyhow, 
we're definitely going to be coloring this. Maybe just black and white, but we're going to be coloring it. So let's get to making some cards. So for this first card, I've got a bunch of moon masks from Brutus Monroe, and I'm going to be using the smallest one. I want to blend a night sky. And I'm starting out with Chip Sapphire, which um, it ends up, my, uh, my ink pads and these domed um, blenders I'm using are just saturated with ink. I was surprised with how much ink was going down. Uh, this next one color is Uncharted Mariner, and I believe it's the first time I was using that to blend, and it's, it's a beautiful color. And so I was just trying to blend everything here, and I've got so much ink down that I need to get a little post-it note to help me from getting ink all over my fingers. I get ink all over myself anyway, but this helps somewhat. And um, I don't use these little domed blending brushes as much as I used to, but they, they really do a good job when I'm using the Distress Oxide inks. Now this color is Peacock Feathers. As soon as I put it down, I decided I didn't like it. And the beauty of Oxides is you can pretty much blend right over them. So I just used some more Uncharted Mariner on top of it. And now I'm coming in with, I believe, some Salty, I think that's Salty Ocean I'm using. And it's just, I'm getting a, what looks like not that good of a blend, but it does in the end all turn out rather pretty. And for the bottom, we're using a little bit of um, con Concord Preserves, is it? No, is that what it's called? Seedless Preserves. I, I was close. Concord Grapes, you know, Seedless Preserves. I'm just thinking grapes all the way around. And so... We get this all blended, and it kind of looks like a hot mess right now, but when everything dries and we have everything done, it turns out pretty well. I ended up not going in. I don't know what I was trying to say there, but I ended up not going in with uh, any black soot. And as you can see, my ink pads were so juicy that my moon is a little bit... Um, you can see the ink in it. So I'm taking part of the mask right here that gives us like our man in the moon. And I am just going to be using a little bit of, um, I think it's weathered wood. Uh, I think. I had to go check. Yeah, that's weathered wood. And what I'm going to be doing is putting that down and then I'm going to go right over the top of it with some scattered straw. Now I didn't want a bright yellow moon but I didn't want this moon to just be bright white against all this blue either so I thought a little scattered straw would kind of give it the color we wanted and I wanted that weather wood I wanted that covered up just a little bit. I want it to kind of look like you're seeing, you know, it way in the background, which is, is what it ends up turning out to look like. So I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. And now we're going to make this a fairly flat card. I'm going to be stamping over the top of it, um, other than the sentiment, which I end up um, adding. We're going to go ahead and we're going to stamp Santa right over the moon. And I'm going to stamp um, some greener. Well, it's not greenery. It's going to be all in silhouette, but what looks like pine trees in the bottom. I'm going to be putting those on the bottom of this card. And after I get that all put down, I will be cutting this card down. So I'm putting it in my Misty, and I've got everything kind of sped up a bit, and I'm cutting out a little bit here and there because I figure if you make cards at all, you've seen some of this stuff a lot, and I don't need to baby step you through it. Um, there are probably much better card makers that um, beginning card makers can find to baby step them through. I know when I first started, I needed a lot of baby stepping, but I was kind of too stubborn and I made a lot of accidents and I still do make accidents. But for now, 
So I'm using a little bit of a Versa Fine Ink because I just love how dark that is. And it probably took me three or four times to stamp this before it turned out as dark as you're seeing it there. And I'm going to take the sentiment, Merry Christmas, and I actually remembered my embossing bag, and I'm going to use some Versa Mark ink, and I'm going to just um, stamp out Merry Christmas, and then we're going to use some Brutus Monroe Gilded embossing powder. I'll put a link for that down in the description when I am done. Speaking of links, um, as of right now, this kit is still available. So if you like it, I would go ahead and quickly buy it. And so I just went ahead and I cut this down in a square. <laughs> nothing, nothing complicated about that. And I am going to attach that right where you saw. But first, I'm going to cut down this card just a little bit. Because, honestly, this way it's going to fit on my card base. I'm not going to have any unwanted white showing because we're going to make it wanted white. And we're going to put that on a top folding A2 card front. And I'm just going to glue that down flat. Like I said, nothing nothing is popping up on this card. And it's going to go through the mail nice and easy for us. And as you can see, once everything dried, that ink blending turned out gorgeous. I Even, even I was in doubt until it dried off. And we're going to put that Merry Christmas right to the side there. And as I was looking at this card... I still felt it needed a little something. I thought about possibly, um, before I put down the Merry Christmas, I thought about maybe using some um, Snowfall Grip Paste over the top of it, or even the um, background stamp that came. But in the end, I just decided I was going to put some little round Sizzix dots that I got. I... I think I got them with another card kit, to tell you the truth. Just one of those things in my stash. And I took the smallest little round circles, and I just scattered them all over the background. They kind of look like snow, but yet they're gold to match the Merry Christmas. And I thought it just kind of added something, and I loved the way it looked. And so... I'm going to just add a bunch of these to the card front and glue them down. And it's going to be it for this card. Now, I, I really enjoy when you don't have, like, the hole in a sequin. For whatever reason, I just... Those aren't my favorite thing to work with. If they come in a kit, I'll use them. But I much prefer totally flat, um, sparkly things. Now for this next card, I'm ink blending kind of a twilight. And we're starting out with, um, I'm not even sure. I think that might be Uncharted Mariner again. or And then some Salty Ocean. I should have like written this down. As I'm doing my voiceover, I'm just looking at a real small window here. Now, of course, this is the uh, Seedless Preserves. And I'm just trying to get a good blend going. As you can see, I'm kind of using one. I've got one uh, dome, and then I'm using blending brushes. And I'm going to be pulling in right here some uh, picked raspberry. And in the bottom, I'm using, well, you don't see it yet, but I think I end up using, um, uh, what's the newest orange? The Crackling Campfire? And I know, I gotta look. Yeah, I end up on the bottom doing Crackling Campfire. And... After I, I use the Crackling Campfire, um... 
I found out that you can't see it anyway because I end up putting a snowbank right over the top of it. And I do end up kind of fixing that a little bit because I want a little bit of that crackling campfire to show. And again, this, this looks like a mess right now. Nothing looks blended, but as it dries, it, um, it dries in a totally different kind of look and it all kind of blends together. You'd be surprised. I was surprised. And so here I've got these two little snow banks, as you can see, that I cut out. And I do end up deciding to uh, add a little bit more crackling campfire. I think I, I don't show it. I think I did it off the side. But here I am just stamping out the different components to this card. Uh, I might actually be stamping a few other things for another card as well. Yeah, I'm using the little train and the deer for a different card. But for this card, we're going to use the um, North Pole and the uh, little Christmas tree. And so the little, see, there it is. I've got that little... Um, orange peeking up that doesn't look like much now but you're gonna see it's it's gonna look good once we're done and I'm going to be gluing down these little snow banks which are from the pearlescent paper from the kit and I'm going to just glue the first one down flat but I'm going to pop up the second one and now I'm just cutting cutting down my card base. I'm going to end up popping up this card base so the entire card has a little bit of dimension. Uh, this card ends up being a lot of fun and I love the way it turns out. Right now it kind of just looks a little funny the way that orange uh, looks like a hill. But trust me, once it's all covered except for a little bit of orange, it's going to look fine. So I've got my little tree and my little North Pole there. And uh, I am putting my popped up card base right on our A2 card front. The reason I didn't show it was because the foam tape I'm using is just, um, it, it's awful. It's too sticky. It sticks to everything. I have a heck of a time with it. And it's just easier to do it off camera. I, I didn't need everybody laughing at me as I, like, fussed around with it. It's like Dollar Tree foam tape, not this, the stuff you didn't see. And uh, I really need to get some new foam tape because all I have right now is this thin, thinner stuff. And so we pop up that, and we're going to glue down flat our little tree and our little north pole. And... See, you can see how the little orange just peeks up there, just like the sun just went under the horizon, and which was what I was going for when I ended up uh, making our orange into our, a little hill. So I'm gluing down this North Pole flat, and I am going to use the sentiment, Sending Holiday Cheer. And I want it right there, but I decide I probably should have stamped that either before we did all this or I'm going to do it separately. And I end up just doing it separately. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, stamp out sending holiday cheer. And then we're going to heat emboss it with uh, some clear embossing powder over the VersaFine ink because uh, black embossing powder just likes to get everywhere on me. I prefer to stamp with black ink and, and go over it with clear. Gives the same look without all those stray little um, black embossing things. Now I've got all my little dies here on um, a magnet and chipboard that I just kind of threw together. I bought some cheap magnetic sheets on Amazon and some chipboard on Amazon and I just kind of throw them together so I can Put my dies on them and we cut out sending holiday cheer because actually until this card I kind of forgot that all of the sentiments uh, cut out which is great so I'm gonna put that right where I thought it should go but that's not gonna be it for this card 
I remember that I have got a ton of glitter and so I'm going to take some glossy accents and I'm going to just use a little bit of glossy accents here and there and then I've got some glitter that I am not sure exactly where I got it. It just says Prisma Glitter on the top of it and I thought it would kind of dry looking more like snow but it... Um, it doesn't look like snow when it dries, but it's still very pretty. So I'm not I'm not upset. But I think next time I want something to look like snow, I'm just going to go ahead and reach for uh, some Tim Holtz uh, rock candy. Because I know when that dries, that, that keeps uh, a white look. And this, you'll see, you'll see what color. This kind of just um, takes an iridescent look looks very iridescent once it dries and that's gonna be it for card number two now for card number three I am making a little penguin card now I'm gonna stamp out all of these now you can see here I'm using the pearlescent paper and I took an embossing folder uh, from Simon Says and I'll link to it but I think any embossing folder with snowflakes would, would work um, if you don't have any of those you could just use the pearlescent paper and you know stamp out some snowflakes or don't use any snowflakes at all and just use the pearlescent paper. Um, I, I think you could do almost any number of things with these. This cute little penguin uh, stamp has a snowflake. You could also just stamp that in the background. So there's so much you can do. So I'm going to use the penguin, the little sweater, and the little hat. And I'm going to... Um, color them with some memento because we're going to Copic color them and it's going to be really really simple Copic coloring. I think I'm going to ink blend but then I don't do any ink blending. I just do some really simple coloring. Um, you don't need to blend just because you're using Copics. You can just use one color and, and be done with it. And that's pretty much what I did. I started with the penguin with one color light, uh, a light gray and then I ended up just coloring over it entirely with a darker gray and uh, it looked fine there's you know you do you <laughs> if you want to try to ink blend and you're a better colorer than I am go for it here I've got this sped up I think uh, maybe eight times just so you can kind of see me color if you want to if not feel free to skip right past this and, you know, because half the time I don't know what I'm doing when I'm coloring. And it, it's really weird right now. I've got like a, a few more card kits I've got to get to some videos for. And it, it's odd to me to be doing Christmas cards when I'm still trying to get my Halloween cards done. Um, I've got three of them that I'm going to send to my three kids. And I'm debating on whether I should do more because I have a ton of well, for me, a ton of Halloween stuff. But it almost seems like Halloween season is done because I'm doing Christmas stuff. But, I mean, far from it. It's it's only, um, well, we got another week or so before Halloween hits. And I don't know. We used to decorate so much for Halloween. And now I don't really get any kids coming by. So it's kind of like, well, what's the point? I, we used to have so many different Halloween uh, decorations. And I'm honestly, I think I might uh, drive about an hour away to go spend a Halloween night with my daughter. We'll, we'll hand out candy to the kitties and uh, we'll, we'll put a little fire pit going and maybe crap, crack open a drink. And uh, it sounds like a lot more fun than staying here and having nobody come to the door and just uh, eating that sad bag of candy by myself. Of course, the husband will be here if we get any odd, you know, trick-or-treaters, like one or two. I think we only had two last year, so I still have to have a bag of candy because I feel awful if somebody comes to the door and we're home and I don't give something out. 
And that way he can be the one that listens to the dog's bark and give out, gives out the candy to whatever kid comes to the door. And I can be miles and miles away and do, enjoying an adult beverage. That's my plans anyway. So here you can see my very simple coloring. Um, kind of doing a few shades of blue and some orange for the sweater. And my little penguin, I put a few white highlights on his flipper and on his head. And then I end up covering those up with the hat and the sweater anyway. But we get a little bit of uh, white highlights for his uh, little eyes. And it just, it's the cutest little thing. Now, when I end up gluing down this um, white pearlescent paper... I used some craft tacky glue because my other glue, um, my Barely Art glue, got a little clogged up. And I didn't have the cap on completely on the art, uh, uh, not the art glue, on the other glue, the craft tacky glue. And a little bit too much came out. And you can kind of see that once I glue it down. It actually makes a wet spot through the paper and I decide right here that I'm going to use the debossed side instead of the embossed side for whatever reason I just kind of like the way that looked better with our penguin and I st the glue starts out coming out fine and then right about here nothing else will come out and when I switch and I don't show myself using it but I use the craft tacky glue and if you look closely right on the upper right hand side there it is coming through the glue like I said these um this pearlescent paper is very thin and so I've just kind of got a block down there to help it adhere a little better and I'm putting the little sweater on the penguin and it, it like adhered almost right away <laughs> it it's a little crooked and I was like you gotta be kidding me but you know it doesn't look that bad so I just kind of left it I didn't want to pull it up and rip the paper but this little hat is adorable on that penguin well so is the sweater for for that matter and so I'm gonna glue our little penguin right at the bottom of the of the page. I'm going to pop him up using some foam adhesive and I don't really have um, have to ground him too much because he's at the bottom already and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to cover up that um, those wet spots because I am not 100% sure when this paper dries that it's going to dry without you seeing it because I have not used this pearlescent paper before. So I want to go ahead and I'm going to stamp out Have a Cozy Christmas and I'm going to put that at the top and hope it kind of can cover up a little bit of um, the glue showing through our pearlescent paper. Now as it happens after it was completely dry you didn't see it but at the time I didn't know whether you were going to see it or not so I took some Versamark and I took some um, Nuvo called uh, Serenity Blue embossing powder now you can still find this embossing powder in a few um, odd places online but for the most part it's been discontinued but I know that uh, Hero Arts actually has a blue that's very similar to it. And I think any light blue embossing powder would work. Or you could just use a light blue ink and then just use a clear embossing powder over it. And so that's what I used. And it um, matches... This, this card pretty well. Now I end up using, I don't know if I showed it earlier because I've been too busy yapping, um, a light blue card base which um, is from the Stamps of Life. I think it was just in my stash and I didn't want to use the lapis blue that came with the kit. I thought about it but it was a little too dark for the colors I used uh, for the sweater. 
And so I thought this Have a Cozy Christmas just worked with the background really well in the colors we chose. And then as I was looking through my stash, I happened to find some more um, Stamps of Life product, a little bit some enamel dots that I thought just worked wonderful with this card. So I scattered a few of them around just to give a little extra sparkle. And that was it for this card, for card number three. Now, moving on, yay, we are on card number four. For card number four, I just had to use this gorgeous, gorgeous glittery paper, glittery diamond paper. And for this right here, um, this is the on one of the only stamps that I know of in the kit that didn't have a die. I'm stamping down railroad tracks on a piece of the um, pearlescent cardstock. Now, this is the pearlescent cardstock I have left over from um, the second card we did with the North Pole stamp. And I'm stamping down little railroad tracks, and because I am afraid of it smearing, I'm going to heat emboss it really quick because I'm not sure how long it might take to dry on this pearlescent paper. So when in doubt, heat emboss. That way you don't have to worry about smudges. So I get that heat embossed, and I am going to glue down this great big hill. It's going to come up halfway up our paper, and I am popping up this, um, this glitter card stock using that same cheap dollar store foam tape, which is why you didn't see me use it again. And I'm going to glue down flat our little snow bank here. And once I get that glued down, we are going to glue our little black silhouette railroad right to it. Now, if it seems like I put that um, that acrylic block on and we move it almost right away, that's because I do edit out some of um, the footage of me cleaning up different things. So you're not seeing that on there as long as it actually is. Because sometimes it seems like um, you'll see makers put down the acrylic block and then move it like 10 seconds later. You, you can almost trust it is on there a little longer than that. So I'm gluing down this little train flat on the tracks. And then I'm going to take our little deer and I'm going to put him up at the top of the hill. I just think he's adorable. I thought about adding like more little little figures or deer and I just thought it might get too busy I thought in this case simple might be better but um, once I get our tis the season which is heat embossed in heat embossed in black I did want a little bit of shine to that and I get that glued down I realized that I was going to put a moon up there above the deer it's why it looked very very you know just plain it's like it was missing something and yes it was missing something I wanted a moon up there in the sky so I went ahead and I stamped out the moon and I heat embossed it just like I heat embossed to the season because I thought a little shine on the moon never hurt, even if the moon is black. And we are just putting that up there in the corner. And because we've got the shimmer of the snow with the pearlescent paper, and we've got the um, beautiful diamond glitter paper, or silver glitter paper, um, that's it for this card. It's just so pretty. Now for our last card, I'm using the little tree with all the sentiments, and I'm using the lapis paper that came in the kit, and I am going to stamp out this tree, and we're going to emboss it in gold. Now this tree um, barely fits an A2 card, card front, um, so I put it in the misty so the very last word 
is hanging off. That way we have a little extra room at the top because I do end up cutting down this card base. And so I, um, the, the word piece, I don't even stamp out on my card because I want extra room at the top. And we have three, three words there in there, our tree trunks, so we can afford to lose one. And I think uh, I stamped that out like three times to get it the impression that you're looking at right now. I just didn't uh, subject you to all three times. And again, I'm using some Brutus Monroe Gilded. And I forgot to use my um, powder tool because it's 50-50 whether I remember to use it or not. But in this case, I got lucky and there was not extra powder all over the place. Now this, when this um, turns, it's just beautiful. I left this in because it's almost too pretty not to show it turning. It kind of goes from a brown to this beautiful golden color. And again, it's, it's way sped up, but it's just so fun to watch. So I've got that all, all uh, looking really nice. And I'm debating on whether I want to use some snowflakes on the side. I think it needs a little something else on the sides. But I kind of think the snowflakes are a little bit too big for my purpose. And then I remember I have this set of Lawn Fawn Tiny Snowflakes. And I haven't used them before. As you can see, they're not even cut apart. But I'm going to use some gold paper and I'm going to cut them down. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the background stamp that came in the kit, and I'm going to use that to go over the top of our tree. Now I'm just taping down my tree, um, or my card front right there, and I'm trying to get my, uh, my snowfall centered, and... I'm not really sure, but I'm assuming that a pigment ink is going to work better than the dye ink. So I'm using that, and I am just going all over the front of this stamp. Or is it the back? I guess it, it's on your perspective. I guess this would be the back of the stamp. But I actually only do this once. I like the way it looks just once. I don't want it to go overboard. I just want a light bit of snow in the background. Let me tell you, that stamp was a pain to clean. It did not want to come clean. I almost took it to the sink, but in the end, I was able to wipe it clean. So I cut this down uh, to four and five and a quarter. And now I am just... Um, Telling you thanks for watching. You knew I had to write on one of these cards. Um, if you enjoyed watching this, please give me a thumbs up. It, it helps with the algorithm so much. Um, and I'd love to have you as a subscriber if you're not. And if you already are, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I love you. So here are those little Lawn Fawn snowflakes. I don't use all of them. The bigger ones I, I leave for something else. But I'm just kind of putting them on and scattering them a few a few of them around just for a little bit extra. Because, you know, the more sparkle on the card, the better. And I do think it was a little bare in those corners. And I don't end up using any other sentiment on this card because the tree is nothing but sentiments. And that was it. So here are the cards. I know they're a little out of order, but um, anyhow, if you liked them, please let me know which one was your favorite. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas if you're watching this late, and Halloween if you're watching it in October. Bye-bye for now.